Hello, I'm Cherry Blumberg and I'm Managing Director of OV in the UK. And I'm absolutely delighted today to welcome you to this joint OV Avena webinar. We will be presenting a fantastic range of functional ingredients, which we believe have real relevance for you in the food manufacturing sector in the UK. They're helping manufacturers develop products that really meet the current trends. And so I'm going to hand over to Margaret, who is the Vice President of Sales and Marketing at Avena, and she will take you through some of the wonderful benefits of these products. I hope you enjoy it, and thanks for watching. Thank you, Sherry, for the introduction, and to Ovi for the opportunity to present today on Avena's functional, sustainable, nutrient-dense pulse ingredients. We also mill oats, but that is for another day. Avena was founded in 2008 by Canadian pedigreed seed farmers who were committed to supplying people who for medical reasons required uncontaminated pure gluten-free oats. Avena was instrumental in establishing and developing the purity, pro purity protocol system of growing start safe, stay safe, gluten-free certified oats. In 2018, Avena merged with Best Cooking Pulses, a family owned Canadian company that had been active in the pulse milling and trading since 1936. Best Cooking Pulses was also started by farmers. Avena has three locations on the Canadian prairies where we dry mill gluten-free oat and pulse ingredients. Avena's core focus is to create functional, sustainable, highly nutritious whole grain and seed ingredients that are minimally processed. Avena is anchored in strong relationships across the value chain. In August 2019, just prior to COVID, we held a customer and farmer appreciation day with farm tours and a barbecue. Avena's growers have a regular school, an annual school, where we meet to review farm and plant practices. This is, this is held at least annually. Avena also provides training days with customers. We learn together and explore ideas that often develop into innovative joint projects. Avena has a strong commitment to food safety and quality management systems. Here's a glimpse of our in-house lab and our numerous certifications and approvals. Back to pulses. Pulses are the non-oil seed legumes. They include peas, beans, chickpeas, and lentils. All pulses are non-GMO, free of all major allergens, if well cleaned, nutrient dense, and highly functional due to their protein, starch, and dietary fiber content. In addition, pulses are one of the most sustainable food crops on the planet. Avena has real relationships with farmers. We wanted to share with you Terry Ricker here on the bottom left. She's one of our farmers standing in a pea field. When she harvests the peas, they're taken to our splitter where they're split, the hull comes off, the hull is that seed coat. The seed coat is cleaned and then ground into a really fine powder that becomes a natural dietary fiber with 90% total dietary fiber. Matt from Avena will be presenting more about this later on. So why pulses? Pulses are a marketer's dream with a true halo effect, nutrient dense with health benefits, clean label, whole foods with a simple name, free of all labeled allergens, and topped off with a metric based sustainability story that will knock anyone's socks off. Let's just think a bit about sustainability. Pulses are really key to sustainable cropping systems in Canada. Now you might be asking yourself, why import pulses from North America? How can that ever be sustainable? Firstly, it's helpful to know that transportation is a really small portion of the carbon impact of most agricultural products. Exceptions might be something really light like lettuce or, or the use of air freight. Secondly, you really need to think about life cycle analysis. So there are significant differences in the LCA of field peas grown in Canada when compared to the EU. So Canadian peas have a greenhouse gas contribution of 75 kilograms of CO2 emissions per metric ton, whereas European peas have a footprint of 200 to 400 kilograms CO2 emissions per metric ton. The lower emissions in Canada are re really a result of farming practices conservation or minimum till, crop rotations, and technology like precision ag, which results in a reduction of inputs like fertilizer, insecticides, and herbicides. Interestingly, Canadian lentils, because of their unique ability to sequester carbon, actually create zero 
CO2 emissions per metric ton. Last year, uh, Vena Foods, we actually joined Field to Market Canada and initiated the first Canadian Pulse Innovation Project in Sustainability. So in partnership with 27 farms, which is 20,000 acres or 8,095 hectares, we gathered data to determine base metrics around land use efficiency, soil erosion risk, greenhouse gas emissions, energy use, and organic carbon change. Next steps will be exploring farm practices together with the potential to improve these metrics. Let's move on to nutrition. Pulses are nutritious, high in protein, dietary fiber, and micronutrients, including B vitamins, iron, calcium, zinc, potassium, and magnesium, yet they're low in fat. They're high in resistant starch, which means they have a really low glycemic index. This increases satiety and lowers blood glucose levels. Just three servings a week of pulses results in significant reductions in markers for cardiovascular disease. Let's think now, whole and split pulses do come in a variety of forms. So there's flours, meals, grits, and cracked pulses. Your chosen application and food processing equipment will determine the optimum particle size and distribution for your pulse ingredient. All of these ingredients are available ready to cook or ready to eat, conventional and organic. Now, before we look at specific applications, let's just take a minute to consider flavor because that's always a worry. Many of you will have experienced that real kick of flavor that you get off of pea protein. It's important to know the flavor of protein is actually carried in, in the flavor of the pulses is carried in the protein fraction. So here's a smooth lentil soup and good old baked beans. I think all of us know there's no kick with these. The flavor of pulse ingredients is moderated or eliminated in processing by manipulating time, temperature, and moisture. That's where Avena's proprietary tempering process was really born, was creating pulse ingredients that are neutral in flavor, but are still considered whole and actually are functional. We don't cook the functionality out of them onto applications. Avena has put together a helpful compendium of applications, ingredients recommended, and resulting functionality. Let's just take a quick look at some of the specific verticals. Conventional bakery. There are applications listed here that are for tasty and attractive products. Why would you include pulse ingredients here? To boost the nutrition. Here we have, um, a graph showing us if you replace 20% of the wheat flour in an 800 gram white bread loaf, you get improved fiber and protein levels. Tempered pulse ingredients can also provide egg replacement in bakery. Michelle's going to be speaking on that in just a few minutes. Egg replacement is particularly relevant in gluten-free baked goods. Let's go back to nutrition. Now this chart actually provides a clear demonstration of how much higher pulse flours are in fiber and protein than typical starches and flours used in gluten-free products. Thank you to Michelle for this next bit of scone work. The 20% replacement of the standard gluten-free flour with layered lentil flour and navy bean flour increased the protein by 60% and the fiber by 75%. Add Avena Best Pea Hull fiber, replacing the typical psyllium husk, and you get a, a whopping five grams extra fiber while it's creating a structure that has a really smooth, lovely mouthfeel. Additional applications are batters and breadings. Later on, Mike will, um, Matt will be introducing pulse ingredients. Recommended next slide for use in plant, meat and plant-based alternatives. Let's go on and look at a breading system. In the fish nugget we see here, Avena's yellow split pea flour and pea hull fiber replaced 100% of the wheat and corn ingredients, also allowing for the elimination of gums and caramel for color. There is no off flavor, and in fact, the nugget was preferred by the taste panel. Let's go on to snacks. Extruded and popped snacks are one vertical where pulse ingredients have demonstrated proof of concept again and again. The starch in pulses is highly functional in extrusion systems with 30% amylose to 70% amylopectin. When Avena Foods merged with Best Cooking Pulses, we celebrated with the creation of an oat and pulse snack that had the optimum ratio of oat to pulse ingredients. This was to maximize the essential amino acids and increase the quality pro protein or PDCAS. 
The Innova, Innova databases helped us to compare a rice and maize-based snack to a snack made with pulses. Check out the increased protein and dietary fiber coupled with a reduction in calories. Innovation is front and center to Vena. In 2020, with the support of Protein Industries Canada, we initiated a three-year project titled Exploiting the Potential of Tempered Whole Pulse Flowers with Specific Functionality in Plant-Based Foods. Our goal is to create innovative ingredients with specific functionalities using whole, split, or decorticated pulses and oats. Ingredients we have developed along with our customers include pulse egg replacer and pulse visco enhancer. Here's a rice crispy square where the typical dried egg powder was replaced by our pulse egg replacer and a vegan mayonnaise that was actually made with Pulse Visco Enhancer, much in the way that you would make a vegan mayonnaise with aquafava. Third picture, Alan is conducting a Boswick test of Pulse Flower right off the line. Many innovative products on the market already incorporate Avena's functional pulse ingredients. High protein, high fiber products, vegan products, natural products, organic products. Avena is the perfect, uh, Avena's pulse ingredients fit into many of the um, demands that customers are now making. So let me say thank you for the opportunity to introduce Avena and the functional ingredients that we mill. We're excited to be partnering with OV and in the not too distant future, many of you out there. Here's to what the future will bring. Next up, Michelle, take it away. Thank you, Margaret. I'm hoping everybody can hear me okay. Fabulous. Um, I'm Michelle Briggs. I look after sales for Avena in the UK and I'm going to just speak a little bit about using pulses to replace eggs. The first thing we need to understand is why a manufacturer is looking to remove eggs from their recipes and then from there we can look at the practical implications of doing it. The glaringly obvious driver and the one everybody thinks about is the increase in consumers embracing a flexitarian or plant-based diet. That one's not going to go away. So manufacturers are just going to have to adapt. Um, another that is probably not as often thought about is the shift of retailers towards um, the higher welfare standards for hens. Now, welfare policies differ between the retailers. Now, I found this excellent summary on the Compassion in World Farming website. But just note, this is from 2019, so it may be a little out of date. Um, what is interesting is back then, only the co-op and Marks and Spencers actually specified that eggs used as ingredients in their own brand products had to be free range. By 2025, though, um, Tesco, Lidl and Morrisons have all committed to stopping the use of cage egg in their ingredients. Now, the cost impact of swapping from cage to either barn or free range eggs is obviously considerable. So manufacturers are now looking for alternatives that they can use to either replace all of the egg or part of the egg in their recipes. Other reasons to remove egg include the reduction of allergens, notably in gluten free products, and also there is an improvement in food safety because you're reducing the salmonella risk. Now, before plant based diets were trendy, the um, price volatility of fresh egg, driven by things like avian flu and salmonella outbreaks, were already meant that hot, um, sorry, replacements have been a hot topic for years. Um, the replacements on the market have always had mixed success. One of the main benefits of egg is that it is a truly multifunctional ingredient. Now, this graphic was sourced from the Good Food Institute, and it really does summarise all that eggs do. If you think about the wide range of products where eggs are used, so we're talking bakery, meringues, to sauces, desserts, even meat products, it really is testament to their versatility. In order to replace eggs, you first need to understand the functionality that the egg is providing in your particular application and then look for ingredients that can mimic it. In bakery, for example, where eggs are giving foam stabilisation, emulsification and gelation, as well as mouthfeel, aroma and colour, early egg replacers were based on dairy proteins. Now, while this met the no egg challenge, it doesn't necessarily work for the plant-based alternatives market that everybody's going for now. We are starting to see a second generation almost of egg replacers come out. Um, they're based on a wide variety of ingredients, some clean label, some not. 
um, one of the ones we are seeing quite a lot of is soy protein isolate. But in recent times, there have been questions asked about the sustainability credentials of soy. So it'll be interesting to see how those ones go. As Margaret mentioned just now, Avena are working on a long term research project to look at how the functionality of these pulse flowers can be changed by the tempering processes used during production. Initial work started over three years ago and focused on tempered whole navy beans as functional alternatives to egg. And from this, our pulse egg replacer and pulse visco enhancer were born. Work undertaken by Red River College in Winnipeg back in 2019 demonstrated how these can work in application. Now here we can see muffins and cookies where the egg was replaced, replaced with either the pulse egg replacer or the visco enhancer. In these applications, the egg replacer was added as a dry powder and combined with the other dry ingredients as part of a normal mixing regime. Now, interestingly, the, the muffin on the left is also a gluten free muffin. Now that's based on a mix of oat and lentil flour that optimizes the protein quality and the amino acid profile. So it just proves that we can make healthier gluten free. All of our egg replacers are ready to eat. This means they've undergone a validated kill step, allowing products using products that are then not further heat treated, such as sauces and desserts. In these types of application, the pulse flower is hydrated before being used to replace the eggs in much the same way that aquafava or chickpea prine is used. Our R&D team have been carrying out initial application work looking at the functional properties as of a wider range of pulses, so moving away from just the navy bean. Initial work has been focused on vegan cake, as this was highlighted as it could be the area where the eggs are the hardest to replace. I did some very basic work back in my kitchen during lockdown because we weren't allowed to go and visit everybody. Um, they're my cakes on the top right. Now, I was very pleased with the texture and I was pleased with the volume. So overall, they were a good cake. The colour, obviously, we don't have the yellow from the egg yolk. So colour is always going to be a bit of an issue. But with a natural food colouring, I was actually pretty pleased with those. Um, then the lower picture, you can see these were carried out by the team in Canada. And here they were looking at a wider range of beans again. So here we can see that pinto bean flour has been used in combination with oat flour in various recipes. And you can just see how the difference in colour between the white sponges and the lighter sponges, that's just from the pinto bean flour. The Prairie Research Kitchen in Winnipeg has very recently, so this is literally worked in the last couple of weeks, have been looking at using the tempered flours as egg white replacers in gluten free bread. Now, I'm not sure if you're aware, a lot of the gluten free bread in the UK uses egg whites and it's a big thing that people are potentially looking to take out. Um, the work is very early stages, but what you can see is both the chickpea flour and the decorticated yellow flour do show promise. Now it's worth mentioning this is a very clean recipe. Um, there's no methyl cellulose in there. There's a very low addition level of xanthan gum. Um, and the next stage of work, we're going to look at changing potentially the fermentation process because we did so no, seem to notice that when we put the pulse flour in, we did speed up fermentation and we potentially got some over fermentation. So then we have to think, how do these tempered flours actually replace the eggs? The key we need to do is under, understand the functional properties that each individual pulse is bringing to the party. Now, I'm not going to spend too much time on these technical slides because I don't want to bore you. But what we found as a general overview is that each pulse performs slightly differently in all of the tests. So I've said it once, I say it again, you really need to understand the functionality you want and then pick a pulse that fits. If you are interested in these all results, there's there's loads and loads of them, more than happy to arrange a call through OV to talk about it another time. So if we think about egg whites in particular, um, one of their key properties is to be able to form a foam. Um, so if we look at this foaming test, I've highlighted here the red lentil. So you can see that not only does it produce a lot of foam, that's the foam capacity, but it also produces a stable foam. So uh, on the foam stability, a high value means it's collapsed back a lot. So for our red lentil, we get a good foam and it stays put. If we then look at the gelling characteristics, here we can see that there's a lot, lot more difference. So, so third group along is the lentils. They all show that they form quite firm gels, whereas compared to the beans, which are on the left, 
they're not a firm gel. So there we really do see a difference. Now, as I've mentioned before, replacing eggs isn't straightforward. Next slide, Dave. Um, it's very rare you will find one egg replacer that can offer all the functionality that egg brings, despite the majority being based on blends of protein isolates, starches and hydrocolloids. You'd really expect that by blending everything together, you'd get something that does everything. Not the case. What you need to do, whatever, whatever egg replacement option you're looking at, you will need to tweak the recipe. So things to consider include checking product pH, checking viscosity, and just generally making sure you've got your emulsifier and your raising agents level right. Either way, you know, application plays its part, ingredient plays a part. So when you're replacing eggs, it really is a case of getting everything to work together. My big take home for this, I said it once, I say it loads of times, you really have to think about the functionality that egg is doing in your recipe and what the replacement product needs to do. If your egg is proving gelation in a meat or meat alternative, for example, then look for a pulse that has good gelation properties. If your egg is providing viscosity control and structure, look for a pulse with a low Boswick and a good water binding properties. Trial them in your recipe, tweak as appropriate. Of course, we are here along with OV to help you with recommendations, addition levels. We will talk about your process, help you with that. By working together, we can make sure we get something that gives you what you need. So that's it. That's me done. Um, very brief, happy to arrange for any questions or anything afterwards. And with that, I will hand over to my colleague, Matt Lynch. Now, Matt is Director of Sales and Business for Ravina Foods, and he's based over in Minneapolis, where it's incredibly hot. So I will say, here we go, Matt. Thank you, Michelle, and good afternoon. Thank you for allowing me to participate in today's event with OV. Under the topic of utilizing functional properties of pulse ingredients, I generally think of these ingredients to manage moisture and liquid fat throughout the manufacturing, storage, baking, shelf life, and ultimately eating. I'll be spending the majority of this time talking about the functional benefits of pea hall fiber and our specialty tempered pulse flowers. So jumping right in, what are P what is pea hall fiber? So it starts as a co-product of our pea splitting operation. So it's it's nature's balance of, of basically 75, 25 um, insoluble to soluble fiber. Um, they do a very nice job of, of binding both, uh, both oil and fat. And how does it work? Um, it works by acting like a sponge. So, so that with the functional fibers, they physically bind and hold it through Van der Waals forces. So acting just like a sponge, uh, it improves moistness and juiciness, it improves texture and mouthfeel and, and reduces purge, it's freeze thaw stable. So even in a frozen meat or if it's been tumbled or injected or, or in, a, in a, uh, a cinnamon roll, what it does is it expels the moisture when, when it's freezing, but as soon as it thaws out again, it can reabsorb it just like a sponge would. Through non-GMO, they enhances uh, by holding on to that, that moisture. X does a nice job of, of uh, increasing shelf life under heat lamps and, and steam tables and such. Um, does a nice job of replacing binders, um, soy protein, soy concentrates, isolates, phosphates, breadcrumbs, um, a lot of gums and starches in some cases. So the primary staling effect, here is a, here's a diagram that we've all seen before, uh, but it helps illustrate the stages of staling. When the item is baked and gelatinization has occurred, the starch molecules have become much softer and the molecules have swelled and stretched. Immediately upon cooling, these structures start to collapse and the and retrogradation occurs so but as it collapses it the starches come together and it and it and the um, um and it gets it gets denser and, and firmer and way to to and what can we do to to mitigate the migration of that moisture as the starches start to collapse and just cause more staling um, we can have a good crust on the outside or we can we can include a fiber um, something on the inside to help manage that moisture it also has a physical action of of helping to keep some of those strands apart as well so the PL fiber and Odal fiber, they physically hold that moisture and manage the moisture migration and, and the speed at which staling occurs. And certainly with enzymes, it can help to mitigate, uh, it can help, they, they work very synergistically together. So, so one can help the other and, and improve it even further. So a little bit on our tempered pulse flowers. Um, note the, the, uh, they, the pulse flowers hold moisture as well. Uh, not quite as much as what the is what the pea hull fiber does, but they do a very nice job of managing that moisture with the higher 
with the increased in in tempering uh, treatment, uh, we can see that they they hold more more of the product as well, more of the uh, moisture as well. So same with oil, it holds about half the amount of oil. Um, the next slide, and then, um, um, but again, those are very quite they're quite similar. Um, and here again, it's one of those things where each one has to have its own functionality and understand the, what your the, the formula where it's going into. But um, tempering flowers, they may it starts to drop off a little bit in some cases, but but just we'll pay attention to those as we as we formulate together. So, um, and with that, we go right back to P hall fiber. Here is a here is a micrograph. Um, we have two micrographs here. One with P hall fiber 125 and one with P hall fiber 200. These are under the same magnification. Notice that the P hall fiber 125 looks more granular and coarse, and the P hall fiber 200 looks looks a lot more frayed and it's open. And it's those frayed particles that actually quite literally act like a sponge, and that's where the functionality comes from. So the one thing nice about staying home over the last two two years through quarantine is the fact that we all had a few extra days to explore ingredients and new capabilities on our own bench top. The next few slides are about a project I completed to better understand how whole fiber works in meat and meat alternative applications. In this case, I had a control. I had a PL fiber 125 and a PL fiber 200, um, and I and I added the, added the three percent on the variables to to a 80 percent beef, 80 percent ground beef. So all three were prepared the same, um, and the follow and this this picture helps to identify what exactly it does. It's worth a thousand words. So once that meat was prepared, I drained the liquid off and collected the liquid. And here's exactly what you see. It's immediately obvious that the 200, the PL fiber 200 was much more absorptive with the 125 being the second, uh, no surprises there. Um, and then the most free liquid came from, came from the uh, control. Note the color of the liquid in each. Each appears as though the each variable retained more of the solids. Um, and the savory components. So notice the clarity. Uh, those that brown, those brown particles, they can dr that directly translates to flavor. Um, I would even say that that if we looked at that long term, I think you could maybe perhaps uh, reduce spice usage or or flavors that you may be adding because it just retains a lot of that. So um, it just and ultimately it increases the yield. So which takes us to the next slide, which which helps identify in this one. It's a it's just a calculation based on that on that previous slide, and that is, um, what it, what does it cost to produce 100 pounds of cooked ground meat? Um, and we've seen we've seen a, a 7% uh, cost savings with the PL fiber 125, and a 12% savings with the with the PL fiber 200, and that and that includes the cost of the PL fiber, that includes everything, and that's I think it's. Uh, it's fairly clear and it holds it much better. So it was much, uh, it ate much better. I, I didn't let this go to waste. I certainly fed it to my family and they definitely preferred the P-Hall Fiber 200 as well. Another project in, in functional benefit of the P-Hall Fiber that began as a cost savings to replace starches and gums, um, not only did it successfully replace the starches and gums, but it also improved every measurement. It was golden color, it was gloss, less glossy, um, it appeared overall. It appeared much more natural as well, and uh, and not a decrease in the quality of that. Another example um, that that and I re and I realize that all of these examples seem to apply to meat so far, but know that they also apply to plant-based alternatives as well. So, so in this case, we were looking at sausages, and and notice that they were all prepared prepared the same, and and once they were made, they looked the same. But here, after they're cooked. You can definitely see that the P hall fiber, and this was the 125, but the P hall fiber held onto that juice, held onto the free liquid much better than the control. Um, so, so it's immediately obvious. It's much juicier, much more plump. Another project that I worked on um, was was making a vegan patty alternative, so a vegan burger, if if you would. So, the ingredients that appear on in green are all ingredients that Avena Food supplies. In this case, I was trying to make a completely vegan or meat alternative patty to help. And to help with the binding and, and avoid using HPMC or the, or the methyl cellulose and, and TVP and eggs, um, I replaced those products with our functional p hole fibers and our pulse visco enhancer. I also looked at, at pH adjustment. Um, as you look at the patties, once they're finished on the next slide, the um, um, you can see that the pH 8 there. So I don't fully understand this yet, but it seemed like just a slight increase in pH actually held the best shape, held the, the dough was the firmest. Um, I don't know the mechanism which that is happening, but I thought it was very interesting. And I think in future development, what we're going to work with is 
rather than trying to make it taste like meat, um, I am going to just celebrate the fact that it's vegan, celebrate the fact that it tastes like a vegetable because they are not objectionable at all. It was quite savory, quite good together. Um, I was quite pleased with those with this project. Other areas that we can look at, um, sauces and fillings, um, all these products do an excellent job of managing free liquid in, in applications. And because there are many different applications in which, are, in which each will have to be trained separately, um, this chart helps not to identify potential applications, but it's a good starting point and use levels. Sauces such as tomato or bolognese would certainly be greatly improved with richness and, 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 uh, and, cert and reduced cineresis as well. So tacos, taquitos, empanadas, these are just a few more examples. Um, not only do these functional fibers hold onto the juice in the meat, but it also helps prevent that migration of the juice into the shell or wrap, which prevents weakening in the shell and reduces that incidence of the phenomena known as blowout. These, these ingredients um, can also be used in the, in the, um, in the wraps and tortilla shell to improve strength and flexibility. So the benefits, pea hull fiber has an affinity and it holds onto that moisture and fat and, and it's all through physical action. Um, it, it eats much more juicier. It's natural. It's non-GMO. Uh, it's and it works. It works very easy, and it's easily incorporated. So with that, um, we are running out of time quickly. But thank you so much for your time and attention, and thank you, OV. I will turn it back over to our host at OV. Again, funny to be here from um, OV. Um, thank you to everybody who attended today. Really appreciate your time. Um, on the screen now, you will see the contact details for myself and for Mark Dutton. Should you require any samples, more information, please give us an email or a phone call and uh, we will gladly assist you with whatever is required. Um, just want to say thank you to the three M's from Avina, uh, Margaret, Matthew and Michelle for your time today and everybody attending out there, the customers, appreciate your time. All the best, take care, thank you very much, bye-bye.